In this episode, Rick talks us through cam shafts, cam drives, and custom lifters that he built to get his engine to 9,000 RPM. Rick, how did you address cam shafts? You know, I addressed the cam shaft and made it bigger and the minimum diameter. It still used the same bearings, but I made the minimum diameter between the lobes bigger so it wouldn't bend it and flex as much. So that's you what you have to do when you only have four cam bearings. You put a thicker core cam. Yeah, it. yeah, I had it made. It was uh, one 300 diameter. Uh, if you buy a camshaft from like any of the cam manufacturers, the, that minimum diameter, that core, pretty common size, 875 between the lobes, and that's too small. It's too small. You need something that's got to have at least, I'd say, a one, at least one 300 diameter. But a lot of cam people don't want to grind a cam that goes into the heel of the of the core. So they, they're right. driving, cutting the heel of the cam, and then they go right into the right into the core and they cut it. But in my mind, I don't care. That was one of the problems that I had with comp was that comp cams that I, you know, they want the lobe running the into the the core of the cam. They didn't want that. And, and I said, well, they said it caused too much problem when it, when, with a heat treat because it bends more. There's more bending involved and we have to, it's more straightening and it takes more straightening time to straighten it out. You know, they're straightening it in a fixture with an air hammer trying to get it straight and then they turn it and they got dial indicators all over the place and looking at it. And I, and I started using bullet cams. Do you use bullet cams? I have used bullet cams, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know John Partridge real well. I've known him for a long time. But later on, you know, I was using bullet cams exclusively because they gave me more information than comp. They could make the cam and they could run the heel of the cam into the base circle of the cam. I want to try to keep this thing as stiff as I can. And, I, and if you have to run off and cut into the lobe, are you going to have a problem with that? And he said, no. He said, it's no big deal. I what? said, well, I wonder why comp cams always go, wants to have a witness. He said, well, it's easier. It's a little easier. That's all. I said, I got a guy that straightens cams with an air chisel and air hammer. He says, he's so good at it. He can do a hundred cams in a day. He says, he's so fast. He's so fast. He says, he's right out of the hill. He came out of the, the gator invested swamps and I gave him a job and the guy's like one of the best workers I got. He could straighten a cam That's in about great. 10 seconds. <laughs> Huh. So anyway, and I talked to John, I don't know, a zillion times about some different things. But mm -hmm. uh, every, and I told him one time, I said, John, you know, every cam that you've made for me has made these guys go fast. He said, well, I'm glad to hear that. Because I, I even sent him a, a couple of emails. I said, you're not going to believe how fast that stocker Jeep pickup truck went. And I put down 1279 on a 1405 index and he went, holy moly. <laughs> I said, that's your cam doing that. He said, well, yeah, but you had me modify the load. I said, I know, but still, your cam. So maybe you should uh, talk a little bit about what you, what you did for the rollers in that cam. This is a roller cam shaft. The four liter, uh, we made a cam. We, I actually made two cams out of 8620N tools. It's, it's not a tool steel, but it's a pretty good steel. It's, most cams are made with 8620. And I had no distributor gear. We need to run a, a DIS system or a distributor ignition system. I said we get like three co three coils and uh, and a and a pickup, and we'll run off the crank. And we were running a wet sump. Yeah, but it would had a, an external pump off the crank. It was running off the crank with a cog belt, but you know we didn't have any internal oil pump in the pan sure. we had a we had a large pan with a bunch of baffling and stuff the channels oil to the pickup but uh i said we need a dis system so call powerhouse and see if they've got a, a three coil setup for a four liter he called them and they said yeah we got one an amplifier box and uh three coils and it so it works really well he said well, we've never really sold any of this to drag racers, but it, I sure it, it would work well because we use it pretty much in everything else. Most he said we right. use them in boats and stuff like that. We got the stuff and and he loved it. 
Charlie was always the one playing with the timing and stuff. I say, hey, you know, dial it in here and dial because we had it had slope on it. You know, it slope at three thousand to eight thousand. Then it right. had like a little bit of tail slope on it you could put on it, and it could go up and down. You know, it could go more spark or less spark a little bit, not a lot, like maybe five up or five down from wherever it was set at. Well, and that probably uh, made it tuning your roller a lot a lot easier. <laughs> It made oh yeah, it was really nice because you know the cam, the cam itself was independent of anything else, mm-hmm. right? And it had that bigger diameter, and it even though you know, I, Gordon Holloway who crowned the cam was he was the guy I was talking to. He was he was always at the races, and uh, I talked to him a lot. He said I'm sorry I had to cut some of that material away. He said but we only took forty thou off it total. I said, yeah, I know. That's okay. It'll be okay. Hmm. Right. And uh, he said, we got a little bit of witness on it, on the heel. I said, yeah. He said, and he said it was real easy for the guy to straighten. I said, okay. So that's he did great. it, and I put the cam in, and that's the cam that was in there, the intake that we changed, and uh, and the carburetors and all that stuff. We changed right at the racetrack uh, for the fourth qualifying run, and it went 870. That's wild. Tell me about the, uh, I think you said you were using Pontiac rollers in that thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we were using AMC V8 roller lifter. Don't ask me the brand because I don't remember. <laughs> 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 they had a tie bar that was attached to one lifter. And then the other end of it was in a slot. And it was slot, you know, it was all the way around it. Square, not a button, but a, like square. The button was a square, like a uh, maybe a little rectangle or something. It was like, you know, that was the, what the tie bar would link into. And it would just slide in that, in that square. And I had a real thin cutoff wheel, mm-hmm. one of those fiber wheels that are like tough as nails. And and I just right. like, zzz, zzz, you know, and I just went, zzz, 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 and I cut, I cut the the end of the the tie bar. I just cut the end out of it. Where now the, it, it looks like a fork. It's the same, you know, distance between them. It just it's just sharp all the way to the end. Now they just oh. hit it with a little hit a little, little file to knock the burr off. He, he says, "Is that enough to hold that?" And I said, "Yeah." I said, "That's tool. So you, that's that's tempered steel. It ain't gonna go anywhere." So you just cut it so that you can actually just flip the two yeah, just, rockers I just, apart. The end of it was like was yeah completely sealed off. Okay, and it just had a slot machined in it, and then that, and that when they put the lifter together, they push. They it's like a press fit that button. It's like press fit in there, right? And it just slid in that in that in that slot. It, it the end of it was still you know intact, but it would just slip, and, and, it, and it was just made a little stiffer. That's all. So what I did, I just took it and cut the end of it off, you know, just extended that slot all the way to the end. You know what? This makes it easier to put in because you got that, now you got it like a fork. Take two screwdrivers and whittle them down in there and and, and put and push it down on the other lifter and then they drop right in. So did you end up, uh, did you actually end up running roller um, bearings on the sort of cam journals as well? Or did no. you just run regular Babbitt? Yes, Babbitt. You know, if I could run roller bearings, I'd definitely do it. Oh, tell us why. Because of friction. There's so much is less there, friction. Oh, it's... Is there really? Mm-hmm. Gobs less friction. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it, you know, that, if I was going to build an engine, you know, nowadays, would have roller bearings. Gotcha. And then maybe one last thing on this, uh, on the, the uh, valve train side of it is uh, your, um, timing gears so you had you said you had a set made or did you find it oh yeah okay we had a gear drive right i think it was made by pete jackson pete jackson gear drive oh, i don't even know if, are they still in business i don't know if they are is this one with the uh the idlers they had a dual idler oh, idler on both sides yeah, yeah had a dual idler on small blocks. yep I, the dual idler is nice because it's the great equalizer, you know, you got like a, a one force on one side and one force on the other side. They're opposite forces, 
and they wanted mm-hmm. that those horses would well I don't if you put just one gear on there it, you know that's okay but Your with the equalize when, when you equalize it the thing is it, it kind of takes harmonics out of it, the engine well Pete Jackson made them and he just told me this I want something for a four liter so uh, I'm sure that he have a, he would have to pick up the centers of the crank and the because he made the crank gear, he made the cam gear, you know, everything. Everything that meshed together. Mm-hmm. He made it all. Right. And it was nice to use because you just shove it in. It had like a, a, a dog bone that went across both front and back of the two little idler gears. You just shove it in mm-hmm. there. You just put a little wow. little little grease on it, shove it in there. Hey, they're all set. And setting the timing was easy. You know, you know, hmm. can, the green in the cam and stuff, it was easy, real fast. Right. Huh, that's terrific. Yeah, it was nice. I liked it. In the next episode, we'll discuss NVH blocks and the modifications needed to take the 4-liter into racing applications.